All right, all right, all right, kids. You made it to Friday, Friday, Friday. We have knocked out our benchmarks at this point. Great job. I appreciate you all working so hard. Since we just had a science benchmark, which had tons of stuff on there that we didn't cover in class, um, let's not do more science today. Uh, let's do a little bit of social studies. Um, for a long time, we've been talking about all these 13 colonies, and you even worked on that with Ms. Klein as well this week. And all of these things are coming from England. And I just want to let you know that England was not the only European country colonizing in the Americas. It wasn't just the 13 colonies. And then the rest of it, uh, you know, was just wild and wilderness and Native Americans. Um, France and Spain were grabbing, they were grabbing up like large sections of land. I mean, massively large sections of land as well. And when we look at that, you're going to realize, like, holy cow, like, they really were doing a lot of things back then. Um, and we don't really get into that as much. Um, and we'll talk about why pretty soon, um, why we don't get into the, the other countries as much. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, let's take a look at this. Um, and this is uh, fairly accurate. I mean, for our purposes, it's accurate enough. At the time... These are the places in North America. So you have Canada up here and then America down in here. Um, and who they were owned or um, quote-unquote owned by, because honestly it still belonged to the Native Americans if you want to get technical about it. Um, they just took it. Um, here is what we've been studying. Here's our 13 colonies pretty much in this area. And um, in this area right here is where all of the stuff that we have been studying um, has happened. Now you'll notice that France has a pretty massively large plot of land here. Um, there is a little spot about in this area that was kind of being, maybe it's up here, that was being contested between different places, but we don't need to get into that. You'll notice that Spain, boy, Spain is throwing down in South America, and they moved on up into North America as well, and then we have some more unexplored territories here, and that's going to come into play um, here in just a few moments. So it wasn't just England with all of this different land. We're going to get into this is this whole unit um, culminates with the Boston Tea Party. If I were to ask anyone in here who fought in the French and Indian War, well to me it sounds like the French fought the Indians. And that makes complete sense. France versus the Indians. Unfortunately that is incorrect. It sounds like the France and the Indians fought each other, but it's not true. Actually, it was really France and England having a big battle. Both sides had employed the help of Native Americans. So they had allies that were Native Americans. I still don't understand why it would be called the French and Indian War, but it's called the French and Indian War um, as it sits. Um, so don't let that confuse you. Um, I think that's a pretty easy answer if you look at it. Who fought? The French and the British, or England, fought against each other. They just happened to have Native American allies on each side. <clears throat> Where was it fought? It was mostly fought in the northeast, along the border between the British colonies and the French colonies, which they called New France. So we had New England, they had New France. New France just sounds very weird to me. Um, maybe had things worked out differently, it would be the New France Patriots. I have no idea. Um, but it was, it was up in that area. So I think I have a map. So you can kind of see up in here where some of these things took place. And you can see some different skirmishes here. Some, some fights were going on here. So it was along these areas. There's that place that I told you was disputed. Uh, France would say it was theirs, and England would have said it was theirs. And so they were kind of arguing and fighting over who owned that land. We ended up having the French and Indian War along all of these borders um, up in here. You can see some more areas over here that were um, disputed as well. The thing about wars is wars cost money. What are some of the things in a war that cost money? Well, you've got, a, you've got the troops. I mean, even if you're not paying the troops of like money, you still have to clothe and feed and arm and provide shelter for the troops. Weapons, ammunition, food, shelter, clothing, medicine, the ships. 
anything and everything involved in the war costs lots and lots of money. How do these countries pay for war? How do they pay for war in the long run? Well, we have to, let's go back and think about that. Like, how do these countries pay for war? Um, well, if you think about it, um, eventually it's, it's, you know, yes, the kings and queens and people may fund the wars, but they're going to get their money back one way or another. And one big way that they're going to get their money back is through taxes. Um, they will tax the general public um, in order to recoup some of that money. And we'll get into that. So, the French and Indian War went on. We're not going to study that or get into it. Just know that the war ended on February 10th, 1763, and they signed the Treaty of Paris. France was forced to give up all of its North American territories. Now, you're probably thinking, that's a lot of land. They, they got their money back. Well, no, you've got to work and do things on that land to get the money back. Um... Britain gained all of the land east of the Mississippi River. Spain got all of the land west of the Mississippi River. Now, you got to give it up to Spain. They didn't do hardly any of the fighting, and they still got some spoils of the war. Props to them for doing nothing and getting paid for doing it, I guess. So rock on. So the French and Indian War is very important because, remember, wars cost lots of money. England's trying to get their money back. And um, we talked about this. The king and queen aren't just going to foot the bill for the war. They're going to get their money back one way or another. And one of the ways that they do that is through taxes. So the Stamp Act was enacted. It was a tax put on the American colonies by the British in 1765. The tax was on printed materials. If it was on paper, like newspapers, magazines, legal documents... Basically, if you wanted to put something on paper, there had to be an official stamp on the paper showing that you paid a tax on the paper. Now think about it. There were no TV shows, no internet shows, um, no texting, no television, no radios. All news was through paper versions. So people would read the paper. Um, there were no electronic signings of documents. All of that was done on paper. Um, so all your legal documents and the newspapers were out like every day, kind of like they used to be back in the day. Now everything's online for us. That's a pretty hefty tax for everyone to have to pay. Anytime you want to use um, paper, you're having to pay a tax. That wasn't enough. Um, the colonists felt that the British government had no right to tax them because there weren't any representatives of the colonies in Parliament. So they're basically saying, hey, listen, like you can't tax us because we really don't have any kind of say of what goes on in England. We're over here doing our thing. Um, and we had no say in how much taxes are, what the taxes are, what they should be. Um, and so they said, we don't, you know, no taxation without representation. They were not very happy that things were being taxed um, without having any say in what happened in the British Parliament. Um, and again, we have to think about that. Did, did the British really have a right to be arguing? Um, England sent the money over for the troops. They helped fight the war. They didn't make you know the 13 colonies pay for it all on their own. It got the French off of their backs. It gained a massive amount of land for everyone, which opened up jobs and opportunities for almost everyone, more ways to make money. I'm not too sure that they really had a right to be whining about a tax, but I'm going to be very honest with you. I don't know anybody that gets excited about taxes. Um, so anytime you hear about a new tax, most people aren't jumping up and down for joy about it. And I do have to agree with them. They didn't have anybody as a go-between back and forth between England and the colonies um, when decisions were being made. So there was taxation without representation, and they were saying that that's not cool. We don't want that. The colonies reacted in protest. Boy, oh boy, is this um, good for what's going on these days. Um, they refused to pay the tax. 
They're like, we're not doing it. Um, the people that collected the tax, the tax collectors, were threatened. They were beaten. Um, sometimes they were tarred and feathered, which means they poured like hot tar on them and like threw the feathers of ducks and geese and stuff all over them. Um, craziness, they actually took out like buckets for like paint, but they put poop in it and they painted their house with poop. That's disgusting. Um, they even burned stamped paper in the streets. They just took paper that had already had stamps on it and started burning it. Like, nah, man, we're not paying for all that nonsense. Now, listen, I, I, not a hundred percent sure. I mean, I wasn't there. I don't know how much that affected everybody, but I'm not a hundred percent sure the colonists really had a massive right to do this. I think that they had a very good argument that they needed representation, but throwing things and burning things in the streets is probably not the way that they should have gone about doing that. The American colonies, the people inside the colonies, I mean, these they were passionate, all right? I got to give it up to them on that. They were very passionate about this, and they felt so strongly about the Stamp Act, and they were so upset, they actually called a meeting of the colonies. And this is, this is like when America first started becoming America, if you want to get honest about it. Um, we were, again, we were really a part of England at that point, but now all of the colonies got together as one whole unit, and they had something called the Stamp Act Congress. So they had representatives from each colonies who got together in New York in 1765, and they all started talking like, hey, we need to be one strong unit, uh, and we want to get together and let them know that we are all unified in our protest of the Stamp Act. There are a lot of people right now that are upset about things, and they have taken, they've gotten together and they have formed groups, um, and they are very unified in their thoughts, and they have taken their protests into, into areas as well, and we've seen that um, history repeating itself in some ways. The Sons of Liberty. During this time, a group of Americans um, called the Sons of Liberty began to form. And they took the protest to the streets. Um, and again, they were the people that were mostly involved in the intimidation of the tax collectors. They are the ones that would burn the paper. They are the ones that would tar and feather. They are the ones that would paint their houses with poop. Um, as disgusting as that is. Um, and, and we can definitely have some conversations about is that really the right way to go about things um, or not? And we can, we can definitely discuss that. Um, and, and what you're going to see is even this group too is a precursor to things that would lead up to the American Revolution and our eventual um, Dissolvement, and we, we moved away from England and became our own country. So all of these seeds of America are being planted right now. So when you have all these, um, the Stamp Act Congress, and when you have the Sons of Liberty starting to form and get together, and everybody's starting to say, hey, listen, we came over here for religious freedom. We didn't want England sticking their nose in that. Now England sticking their nose in taxing things that we're selling in our country um, and we have zero representation over in England. We have no say in what goes on there whatsoever. Whether you agree with it or not, all of these tactics, um, they were actually very successful because the Stamp Act was gone. The protests of the Stamp Act actually started to hurt British merchants and the businesses. The Stamp Act was repealed on March 18th, 1766. However, that really made the British Parliament very, very angry. So they decided to make a very powerful statement. The same day that they got rid of the Stamp Act, everybody was probably happy, they passed something called the Declaratory Act, which stated that British Parliament had the right to make laws and to tax anything that they wanted to in the colonies. So they have now just taken what was just a tax on paper and basically said, hey, guess what? We get to make all the laws and all the taxes in the colonies. Who wants to predict how this is going to work out? See you later, kids. Subscribe. And